Greetings, ladies and metagens, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Angels of Mercy, written by Apophis Pegasus. Death comes for us all. It is the grand inevitability of the universe. Perhaps we deserved ours, mused Versailles. Her angular features twisted in a grimace as she breathed in and out, the lungs burning from her long track, frantically looking around for threats to her and her parents. She eventually sat down to catch her breath. After all, did they not call us the grand scourge of the universe, a plague on the stars? What more fitting end than to meet our ancestors via another plague? She shook such thoughts from her head. They would be no help now. Certainly not her. Looking up, she saw the souls of her perdition swoop and shriek amongst the dusty clouds of her planet. Void ghoul, the original play of the stars. Mindless beasts born from space, feeding on all they came across, before firing spores into space to search for other worlds to ravage. Not much else was known about them. Hardly any xenobiologist would go near a life and the dead husks they left behind were hardly fonts of information. Hypotheses on what they were and how they worked were as varied as they came. From simple, evolved space-originating organisms, to ancient advanced bioweapons, to the wrath of the creators themselves. Her people had fought well, of course. Gull's Psyche were warrior-born. But even the finest warriors cannot stem the tide of the void ghoul pestilence. Their formations broke, their morale plummeted, and eventually, the elders had ordered what Gull's sick was the means to do so to evacuate the planet. While Gull's sight were a piratical race, few owned large enough or powerful enough ships to evacuate significant amounts of people. Five billion total were gathered up, stuffed into every ship possible, and flown anywhere, anywhere that would take them. The remaining four billion were to go to their fair. Hold out as long as they can in case of rescue. <laughs> rescue, she thought bitterly. It was a lie. They sent the warriors home to say goodbye and hold their families in the last moments. Oh, there had been distress signals, of course. Contacts to every civilization in the quadrant and beyond. Please for aid, for evacuation, for asylum, for anything. The reply was stated in many languages, but the message was the same. You made your fortunes from piracy, and you preyed on those too weak to fight you. You plundered those too slow to stop you. All of you are complicit. You will receive no help from us. There was rage, of course, promises of vengeance. Some even attempted to use moral indignation, ac accusations of hypocrisy. Nothing, after all. Who cares about the opinions of the dead? Versailles closed her eyes and thought of better times, younger times, of reading the stars with her father, preying on fat merchant ships and diplomatic envoys. Oh, the wonders she had seen. She had met more species in her young 62 cycles than most diplomats did in over 235 cycle career. She had drunk the richest wines from executive secret cellars, decorated herself in the finest jewelry on the consorts of the oligarchs, fought fiercely against the most vicious species, from Bogan to Kinnick to Hume. Hume, she smiled to herself. Still relatively young bucks on the interstellar scene, vicious little bastards if provoked. Friendly enough, though, at the best of times, they were one of the few species courteous enough to simply not answer when they got the distress signal. All in all, they mostly stayed out of everyone's way. Unfortunately, their trade routes coincided with Prime Gull Psych Cunt territory, her hunting territory. She still remembered the boy, brave, stupid boy, rushed her during the plundering, when she was not much older than he. No armor, no weapons, just a pipe and boiling rage. To his credit, he even got a swing in, just one. Then she removed one of his hands at the wrist and threw him in the brig. She still remembered the look of rage in his tear-stained face, cradling his draining stump. He'd even tried to rush her again like a fool only to be held back by some of his fellow prisoners until the blood loss took him to sleep. Hmm, spunky little thing, she reminisced. Perhaps I should have... Her reverie 
was interrupted by a shining light in the sky. Five massive ships had just dropped out of the warp and entered low orbit over the planet. Human ships. Looters, she thought. Only reason anyone would be crazy enough to head to Tupacanet during a void gull infestation. Couldn't really hold it against them, though. About a fifth of the gold site proprietary stuff was technically theirs. And what goes around, it seemed to come around. Although five ships was a little excessive, just one ship was the size of a major continent. It would have been filled with everything left. Five ships was extreme overkill. Amateurs, Versailles smiled. Humor was the only thing worth keeping to the end after all. She looked as shiny silver shapes started to stream from the massive carrier ships like a swarm from a hive and descended to the planet's surface. She turned to her tired family. Up, she said. We cannot stay here. Even as she said that, she knew that it was effectively futile. Her parents were not as spry as they used to be and couldn't walk far. Not anymore. Her father, weary though he was, still carried the proud demeanor of his younger days, even smiled softly. Child, listen to me. I know what you're going to suggest, father, and no, me and your mother are old. We cannot go further. No. You must try to survive as long as you can. The void gull are coming, child. And now the humans... No! I will not abandon. She was interrupted by a bone-chilling shriek. Whirling around, her blood ran cold. A void gull was approaching. Its white fluidic body constantly spawning insectoid legs, tentacles, spikes, like it was mulling over how exactly to slaughter her family. Rising up and shaking legs, Versailles drew her sword and positioned herself between the beast and her parents, ignoring their cries to run. After all, where was there to run? There was no more ships left, and the planet was crawling with void gull and humans. Best to make a last stand here and meet death in her way her ancestors could smile on. That mode of thinking effectively shattered as the monster battered away her sword as if it was a children's toy and opened a rent in her thigh. Indigo blood smashed to dusty ground. Hissing, the void gull smacked her flying to land a couple meters away from her screaming parents, ribs burning, head ringing from the impact. Rearing up, the void gull began its charge. Its brethren had scoured much of the planet, and it had been a while since it had encountered fresh meat. Rushing towards the older of the two gulls' sight first, it grew tentacles that reached out to shove them into its gelatinous body and promptly was incinerated by a beam of intense light. Through Versailles' bleary vision, she saw a figure holding a very, very large gun, its barrel smoking and glowing from the intensity of the plasma burst that it had just subjected to the creature. Striding towards her and her parents, the figure approached. Hard plates covered the chest, arms and legs over the durable skin suit. A hood hid the figure's head and a mask hid their features. But Versailles knew exactly what they were. That stride, that gun, the emblems on the armor. Human. It stopped a few feet from the family and cocked its head, assessing them for servitude, perhaps. Why else would it have killed the void gull instead of looking for riches? After a few seconds, its assessment presumably over, it pressed a button on its van brace. Silent as the moons rise. A sleek silver ship floated down to them, its seamless hatch opening via some unknown mechanism. The human grabbed Versailles' parents first, ignoring their cries and feeble struggles of protest, and carried them into the ship. Emerging again, empty-handed, it found Versailles, attempting to raise her sword at it, arms shaking, supporting her weight on her one good leg. In a depressingly familiar fashion, the human huffed in irritation, smacking away her sword from her tremoring hand and carried her to the ship, paying no mind to her protestations and threats. Securing her next to her parents, the human barked something in its glutteral tongue and the ship sealed itself and rose swiftly through the atmosphere. Upon arrival on one of the carrier ships, the human hoisted Versailles up in its arms, again ignoring her threats of extreme physical violence upon their person and guided her parents out of the dropship into the vast open space. Versailles couldn't believe her eyes. Packed in one of the carrier ship's vast holes will gull psych. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of them. Most tired, some injured, but alive. 
alive and safe. Carrying her to an alcove, the human gently placed her down into a bed, her parents sitting down warily beside her. The human turned to the side and clicked the side of his mask. Someone will attend you in short time, the human forced out. The girl's psych tongue was not one easily learned by ones with their physiology. Turning to leave, the human began to walk away, pausing only at the feeding of a hand clamped around his wrist. Why did you save us? asked Versailles. The human froze, then panels in his mask slid back, revealing its face. His face. He was older now, a scar above one eyebrow, no mask of rage in his face, and two good hands. But it was the boy from the ship that she had plundered all those years ago. Kneeling down, the human stared into her eyes. Shame and fear gripped her into looking away, but the human grabbed her face gently and guided her back and held up his hand. Once a stump, it had been regrown or reconnected. Smiling softly, the human talked slowly and deliberately. Don't have to like you to save you, no matter what you do. The panels on his mask slid back into place, hiding his visage. Turning away swiftly, he marched back to his craft to fly it back to the planet's surface. Versailles clutched her parents tight, weeping. End of story. I'd quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Cold War Boomerwaffen, Severin Cerberus, Bushmaster 177, Henry the Red, Caspar Arnholtz, Cold War Boomerwaffen, Elijah Silvercross, Dragzoon WRE, and Severin Cerberus. Thank you very much.